You now have, Anthony, $5 billion of assets under management. You have a big Bitcoin um, lending business. And the interesting thing is, you have to admit this is at least a rubber bubble, right? There is a lot of volatility and has been historically in Bitcoin. Isn't it difficult to run a business with that kind of volatility? Well, not in the past year, at the very least. Uh, but kidding okay. aside, it is the best performing asset on any uh, significant timeline, whether it's uh, one year or five year or 10 years, it's the best performing asset. So it is a matter of having the right perspective when investing in Bitcoin. And that's how we build out our business. Very conservatively, we lend only uh, a loan to value ratio of 50%, precisely because of its volatility. Uh, and we structured the mm -hmm. business that uh, thrives in both bull and bear markets. Uh, I'm going to keep myself in the doubters camp, uh, just to out myself to both of you uh, and the world here. Uh, my, my concern with Bitcoin is it's impossible to know how to value it other than what the next guy is willing to pay for it, which always gives you pause. Now, the counter argument often offered, offered up, Antony, is that's the same as gold. Uh, the JP Morgan call on Bitcoin, or the dollar. 146, 146,000. Uh, or the dollar, I guess. Well, let's not go there. Uh, that, that JP Morgan call, though, was predicated on the idea that Bitcoin would trade like gold. Do you think it's still going to go there, that it'll be treated the same way that gold is treated? Uh, I think it, that actually Bitcoin is a better version of gold because it has the necessary characteristics, you know, scarcity, a fixed finite amount, amount with Elon Musk taking us to Mars. Apparently, there's a bunch of gold there, so we might see some, uh, <laughs> you know, inflationary pressures on gold. Uh, but I do think that Bitcoin uh, is actually a better version because uh, next time you travel to Europe, try bringing a million dollars in gold versus the same amount uh, in Bitcoin, it, 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 it's much better in so many ways. Uh, so I think we're going to see outflows from gold in, uh, in, into crypto. And it is a totally new asset class, like never uh, something like we've never seen before. And it's here to stay. And Anthony, I'm going to push back a little bit against that because, you know, I was thinking the other day when this Arctic frost came down from the great concavity and uh, shut down Texas, you'd rather have gold in that kind of situation than Bitcoin, right? I mean, especially if the cell phone network goes down, you're not going to be able to buy anything um, with, your, uh, with your ones and zeros, unless, of course, you just remembered them uh, off the top of your head. Isn't there a situation, isn't there an argument to be made for gold when it really comes, when push really comes to shove, when you have to grab your bug out bag? Well, I, I am a gold bug, have been for the best, uh, better part of the past decade. But you got to consider the counter argument. And it is that if you invested a dollar in gold uh, a year ago, you have about a dollar seventy. If you invested one dollar in Bitcoin 10 years ago, you have around twenty five million dollars right now. I guess the the other side of this argument, um, and I, I know where Matt's going with that, it's not just gold you want to own, own in that scenario, it's gold coins, so you can actually go buy things with them. That's called the end of the world trade. It only works once. Uh, in terms of the cryptocurrencies, here's my real question for you is, why do we need digital currencies other than the digital currencies that we have? I haven't touched a paper dollar bill or five dollar bill uh, in I can't know, I don't know how long. Everything I do is digital. It just happens to be the one that my central bank manages uh, and my bank manages for me. What's the purpose of a cryptocurrency other than for use, as our central bank said in Canada recently, on the dark web for fraudulent activity, all of the reasons we know people like it? Well, first of all, the number one choice uh, for money launderers in the criminal syndicate is the dollar. So there is no uh, bidding around the bush uh, around that fact. But more importantly, we need crypto and in, uh, in particular Bitcoin because there are 3,000 other <laughs> cryptocurrencies which uh, we're not super excited about. But what sets apart Bitcoin is the fact that precisely your central bank 
cannot print it at will. Uh, and this is uh, something that we've seen being done on a massive scale last year. I think close to $8 trillion have been printed. And you can feel the creeping inflation. Uh, it's palpable everywhere. I was in London uh, uh, some time ago, and I paid for the exact same meal that I paid as a student 10 years ago, twice the pound value. So you, it's obvious in this inflationary uh, macro uh, pump uh, money printing environment that people will be searching for alternatives. And Bitcoin is our generation's gold, and it's obviously that we millennials, uh, the next generation to be the main driver of the economic cycle, are taking such an interest in Bitcoin in particular. I, I say it's a good point on the dollar, right? More hitmen, drug dealers, evil dictators have been paid in dollars um, than any other currency. The inflation argument, though, I wonder if that can come and bite you back, Anthony. I mean, if we start to see it, retail spending was off the hook today. If we start to see the Fed get worried and go the other direction, does that mean Bitcoin, you know, does the air get let out? Do we all of a sudden see it drop down to 30,000, 20,000, 15? We could very see, uh, very well see a correction of 50 percent, and th that wouldn't have an effect on the long term. Uh, 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 bull market of Bitcoin, like 30,000, that was a month ago, and now it will have to crash almost in half to get there. Uh, you know, it, 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 about Bitcoin, it's really taking the right uh, time horizon. Uh, you have to have some because of its potential and the way it has performed historically. But also caution is advice at these levels where uh, the total market cap of Bitcoin is ab above a trillion. Uh, you know, you don't put your kids' funds, uh, college funds, all at once in Bitcoin because there are some inherent dangers. So I'm, right now, I'm not super excited about particular uh, price levels. Like last time when I told you 50,000, I am watching right now the feeling, the market that it's giving me, how it's reacting. It's at 75,000, uh, which would be the next logical stops. What's the leverage and the credit in the system? And what's the overall exuberance of the market participants? and this will tell us uh, where Bitcoin is going next. When you made that $50,000 call, you said by the end of the year, uh, what's your time frame on 75000 Anthony? I haven't brought my crypto crystal ball today. I think that uh, we are accelerating towards uh, uh, 75000 right now, and it's really going to be a question of how it reacts there. Ultimately, I think uh, we're going to go much, much higher. Uh, 100K is very realistic in the next uh, 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 12 to 18 months, but it is not going to be as smooth as a ride as uh, uh, my last year's prediction, simply because of the fact that a lot of people are calling it right now. And last time we talked about it, it was just me and Matt who uh, you know, were even considering uh, such scenarios. And the markets never do what everyone is expecting them. So caution again.